Yeah, hi, hi students of watercolour. Um, do you know, one of the hardest things in painting is to avoid being obsessed by detail. The problem is that too much detail can still to painting. It can sort of take out all the freshness and it becomes forced and it becomes sort of uninteresting. Um, there, there are ways that we can combat this and they're very simple and I'm going to demonstrate this today. Uh, first of all, we need a good composition. Composition is always important. Remember the rule of thirds, get everything looking right. Secondly, find a pinch point within the painting, something that the eye is attracted to. Um, thirdly, paint using strong values. Uh, so you've got good strong lights and darks. And lastly, colors, making sure that you have that nice balance of temperature between warm and cool colors. That's really important. Okay, um, here's a, a lovely scene, a lovely photo by J. William Burke of this lovely autumnal path. Now take a screen grab and let's get started with this painting. Bring that in here and around. This comes out there. Yeah. Fields going on, bushes, bushes get higher. Now we've got like a post or something there. Tree comes up, well, everything's coming up, isn't it? There's so much foliage going on. Try to decide how to. Then you've got this huge gray lump of trees, the yellow things. Lovely. Comes out there. This rolls down. It's a tree there. And then we got the big root of a tree. There. And it comes there. And again, just observation on nature. And what's interesting here, there are many different levels and, and layers going on. This is dark green in there. It's also, interestingly, there's a little, what that is there. There's like a, is it important? Yeah, it might be. Yeah, so there's another tree there. So I've got my sort of one third horizon point there. I've got this nicely coming in over here. That comes over as a tree there. And lots of Lots of reds. Again, I'm going to keep it loose. Um, it's just, I want to get an impression. Um, I think a very pale light blue for the sky. May as well get it in now. Uh, you know, because there's so many fiddly bits going on and there's lots of red and stuff, but Using a, a smaller brush, a uh, sable, it's a rosemary and co brush with a fine point. It's a number 10. It's the series. Well, I can't see the series on here. I think it's 99, the series, if anybody's interested in getting a, a rosemary and co brush. Painting some of that tree in the negative. It 
There's so much stuff going on in this anyway. So let me just turn the light up so you can sort of see what I'm doing. Again, so what's the cerulean? And again, we're looking for, don't try and think that you're gonna absolutely, you know, copy and replicate exactly what you're looking at here it's not gonna it won't happen you're gonna get some a feeling and a flavor of what's going on but that's probably as much as you really want so, uh, okay now Orange, orange is so important with um, this type of scene, autumnal. These are what I call just base colors. Of course, there's bits of green in there as well. Where the blue hits the the warm uh, sienna color, it starts to go a bit gray. You don't mind that. The red. I need to put lights on because I'm finding it hard to see here. Remember, it's the orange carries on, but there's shadows are coming. You don't even have to think about the shadows. Just put the local colors down. Shadows will take care of themselves. Just using orange. It's, it's lovely the way orange works with... Um, there are definitely some dark bits going on but you know this is watercolor you, you leave the dark don't even think about the dark bits yet we're, we're not we're nowhere near that phase we're just looking at all the local colors adding little bits in keep that on the horizon there where the that orange hits blue, blue and orange, it starts to go neutral gray. I don't mind a neutral gray, I think that's absolutely fine. Um, what about this path? It fairly light. I want some of that blue back in the path. Same as the sky. Be cool. So if it's wet and wet. So I started blue here, I've got blue there. I know it gets darker. I know this path gets darker, but you know, this is watercolor. We always start light. 
Get in the lights. Get in those things that are working. Right, green next. Put some of that green, olive green, with that little bit of blue that I already had. Think a little bit of cad yellow. And we've got our greens. Outlines. In sneaking up there. In down there. Again, it's just local colours. That's all it is. They're all pretty wishy-washy looking. It's it's warm colours and cool colours and bits left in the negative just, just to give ourselves a bit of a chance so we know where everything is. So that's basically it. Could put some of that strong yellow in, I suppose. Let's have a look. Wow. It's bright. Again, it looks a little bit garish at the moment. It's because we, we're at that middle phase where it's all half done. Right. That's about it. I'm just going to leave that, put that away. That is the first light wash. Again, it hasn't got any of the power going on here, but it's coming. <laughs> All the dark bits are coming. Getting some of these strong pinks and reds going on. I need to put them in now, I think. That's very close to it. Let's have a look. Again, don't want to get too obsessed by all this lot that's going on. I just want to indicate.
Something missing over here, like a tree. Right, I'm going to start getting some, some dark bits in now. It's all been fairly light up until now. So I'm going to... A dry brush. Just please mix up a little bit of French ultra ring. Get get some super darks going here. Some more. Rigger out in a moment. Regards. Remember the worm? Anybody remember them? my worm? I haven't used that for a long time. Great thing about the worm, it has no control whatsoever. I quite like. So I'm just going to do a bit of worming, as it, as it were. Um, not real worming. I have done one of these type of paintings for a long time now. I, I, I quite like them. I think they're really good, really interesting. Because it's almost a, an abstract piece. I'm not going to go into great detail because we haven't got time, but at least it shows you what you can do and it, it puts you on the right path. 
And remember, we haven't got any shadows in here at all. So. And then, for instance, we want to put in some stronger greens here and there. And it's just putting in some And a little bit of just a little bit of calligraphy, bit of detail. So we're just getting a few stronger values in. And if you were doing this in oil, it would it'd be so different. Or, gu or gouache, it would be different again. It just keeps changing. I'm going to have to stop in a minute because otherwise I'll just, I'm enjoying it too much. And I, I like fiddling and I like playing. This is the art bit. This is a bit called art where you start painting. Lose all your inhibitions. Stop worrying about stuff. Don't worry about neatness. So it's not about being neat or accurate. It's never about that. Just start putting in stronger little sort of bits of value in there. Can you see it? It's sort of slightly. You know, you get real punchy, punchy darks, because then you got lights next to darks. Again, very Wesson, Edward Wesson style. He sort of did that. I'm going to have to stop. I know I can just see myself. 
sort of carrying on here. So I'm creating shapes by just painting things in the negative. That's how it sort of works. But again, very arbitrary. More little bits of strength. Yeah. So I'm painting with a rigger. Through there and through there. So you get a, you know, get an idea of travel of land going through behind that way. So I can't stop painting this now. It's sort of I sort of like the energy of it in a way. Right. I just want to put in some slightly darker blue here. And then we'll quickly look at homework. I'll chuck some shadow on this and then it's done. But... I think it's all about trying to find a way of painting that you sort of enjoy doing it rather than meticulously trying to copy a scene and try and get it all neat and accurate. And They never look good. Those things never, ever look good. The things that look good are the ones that look like they've just been <laughs> chucked. You know, the paint's been chucked at it. Right, let me just get a little bit more of that cerulean. Yeah, so it's just getting a yeah. You know, I'm not going to put any heavy shadow on this. I, I think I'm just going to carry on with that bit of cerulean as the shadow. You make decisions on a watercolour. You know, the, you can plan something in the beginning. I thought I was going to get some French ultramarine and just do my usual big shadows. I sort of, I've got so much freshness going on in here. I don't want to kill that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, just try and darken just a little bit down here. These flecks of light.
And it just goes to show, if you can get your values, your lights, your darks, and an abundance of cool and warm colours, then you're, you're in the good place. Right, that's finished.